we declare the blessing of the Lord upon you like never before. Amen. God is good, and God is good all the time. Amen. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody keep you like the Lord. Can't nobody keep you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Can't nobody free you like Lord. Can't nobody free you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, in him, in him, in him, we move, we live, we have our being because of him. Hallelujah. Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. God is good. Amen. The title of this message today, amen, is Rudy and Fruity. Rudy and Fruity. Amen. Get some roots. Amen. You need some roots in your life. Amen, somebody. That we can stand strong in who? The Lord. And in the power of what? Of his might. That means somebody needs to have a walk in a real relationship with God. Amen. I told y'all the story that we had this big uh, oak tree, a uh, water oak in our yard. And the storm came through uh, some years ago. It rained a whole lot. And the ground got soggy. Amen. And the wind stopped blowing and whipping consistently. Amen. Hurricane force winds. Amen. And they just blew and they blew and they kept on blowing. And it wasn't no let up. I said, oh, God. Have mercy around here, Jesus. And all of a sudden we start hearing a cracking and a popping. I said, what's cracking? What's out there popping? And the lightning hadn't hit nothing. And we heard a little more, heard a little more, heard a little more. Maybe an hour went by or so, a little bit later. And we kept hearing cracking and popping. I'm peeping through the window. I'm trying to see something. Don't see nothing, but I hear cracking and popping. Then all of a sudden, I heard a, the cracking and popping just went on. Crack, pop, and it heard a boom, boom. I said, oh, God. What's going on? Looked out the window. And the big oak tree had fell over across the street. Massive tree. Massive tree. It had no depth of root system. It had width of root, but it did have no depth of roots. Lord have mercy here. And I would never think that here today... <laughs> On February 4th, 2018, I will be getting revelation of how that tree fell. Because we're talking about the source, source of the word. But we have to respond. Our response to the gospel, the word of God, is so very important. And then Jesus said we must continue, we must continue in the truth. We must abide in him. And so that tree was big, that tree was huge, that tree, it was massive. Listen, your gifting is not enough. The gift and the calling of God is what it is without repentance. But you have to have some roots in God. I mean, you have to give your life over to God in totality. That people need to have a real, listen, salvific experience and conversion with God. But it don't stop there. That is only the beginning. That is only the beginning. And so as that tree fell over, and, um, you know, the storm, you know, blew on through, and so you go out, you evaluate what was going on, what's happening with it, you know, and in my mind, I'm thinking that this is a real rooted tree. Because at that time, I didn't understand a whole lot about, you know, water oaks. But I'm saying, that is a huge, massive tree by way of circumference and all the branches that flow out of this tree. Surely, it is going to be here for a long time. And a whole lot of people, listen, until you're really tested and tried, you don't really know what's in you. You don't really know how rooted. You don't really know how grounded. You don't know how firm. You don't know how fixed. You don't know how stable that you are in God into trouble and hell and how water and trial and tribulation and temptation and the devil come to try you all for size. 
That's why it's very dangerous, listen, to be in God's house and then not to add being saved and born again and professing the, that you know God and you feel with the Spirit of God to be playing games with God because there's something that'll come in every one of our lives to rock us and to test our faith, to see what sort we are. Are you gold? Are you silver? Are you wood? Are you hay? Are you stubble? I feel violent in my spirit today because somebody needs to get rooted and grounded in God and bear some real Holy Ghost fruit in their lives. And so we had, went out and I started examining the tree. I said, I see roots here. I see roots here. And there was nothing down in the bottom middle portion of that tree where roots was concerned. They was all spread out all over the tree. But nothing went down into the ground, down into the earth. That's why we got to grip the solid rock who is Jesus Christ. That we can stand in the storm. That's why Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church in the very gates of the are not going to be able to prevail against it. Give God praise and glory in the house of God. It's going to cost you something to get rooted and grounded in God. It's going to cost you something to have the fruit of the Spirit of God actively at work in your life. It's going to cost you something. It doesn't come by osmosis. It's going to be by submitting a surrendered life to the Most High God. And you lay, we lay aside every weight and the sin that do us so easily to be set up that we can be able to run this race with patience. We got to cast off the unfruitful works of darkness and let the Word of God have preeminence in our lives. Let me give you a foundation for what we're talking about. I just feel, I just open my mouth and let God fill it. How about that? Because we got people that we know that's not saved. We got people that we know, listen, that are backslidden. Because you are either in Christ or you are not. And some people say, hey, well, you know, if you get in Christ, are uh, you there forever and perpetually? Well, if you had a real true salvific experience, well, a conversion with God, yes. But you still got to continue in the truth as Jesus said. Yeah, right? You can't come in God playing games with the Lord. You got to get all the way in. Because the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and he comes to destroy. And we've learned that he come to sift and to, you know to sift you, he sift you like wheat, and take that word that has been sown in your heart. Immediately he comes. Oh, you just thought you got dressed up and came to church too. Oh no, demons come. The angels of God come. It's more going on in the spirit realm world that's in the natural world that we see with our visible eye. If he says it means, listen, it means that you don't got to walk out the door and say, oh, the devil, he wasn't here. No, 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 no. The thief, listen, he walked to and fro seeking whom he may devour. He's the enemy of our soul. And we should not be ignorant of his, uh, of his devices. We should not be ignorant of the devil's device. We have to be wise as serpents and harmless as dove. This parable of the sower is in Matthew chapter number 13, is also in Mark chapter 4, and is also in Luke chapter 8, where Jesus is talking, where Jesus is ministering. And somebody has to give heed to the word of God. Somebody has to submit themselves to the word of God. And you cannot just be a, a hearer and not a doer of the word of God. Faith without works is what is dead. Being alone. So we have to really submit ourselves to not only that Jesus is Savior, but he is also Lord of our lives. He is not only Savior, but he is also Lord of our lives. We allow him to be Lord of our lives. Let's go over here to Luke. I want to deal with Luke chapter 8 and verse number 14. Luke chapter 8 and verse number 14. God is good all the time. You got to spend quality and quality time in the presence of God. He desires for us to be with him. Too many people are spending time just with themselves. And with things that distract them. Things that begin to choke the word of God out of their lives. And so I'm saved. Well, now what? According to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. 
You got to do something. You say, I'm saved, now what? Well, Paul said, I beseech you by what? The mercies of God. That you present what? Your body as what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. What? Is your reasonable, rational service and responsibility. Say, my, it's my reasonable, rational service. Come on here, and responsibility. Right? I mean, I'm talking to you about these young people that sit in the house of God today. You have a responsibility. Your mama bring you to church. Amen, somebody. That you're in the house of God and you know how to read. You know how to study. Listen, it is your responsibility to read the word of God. Because our young people can do just about even everything that they want to do. And then we are like, oh, no, they don't understand. Oh, no, they don't comprehend. I promise you they understand and comprehend. If the word is preached and taught with clarity and with understanding, they understand the words that, that's coming out of my mouth that you need to walk in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to spend time reading your Bible. And if you don't have one, we got some that we give you free. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. If we don't show that word in the lives of our children now, listen, listen, the culture, the culture, the culture is going to get them. It's too much to, 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 for them to contend with in the day and time in which we live to live a life outside of a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't want to come to church, you don't want nothing to do with God, you want to fight against the word of God, you want to fight against authority, listen, you cannot win. And hell don't like you because you're a human. It ain't got nothing to even do with being saved because you are a human created in the image of, uh, and likeness of God. Hell don't like you. Oh, God, help me here today. Let me get over here where I need to be. Luke chapter 8. And let's look at verse number 11. My primary verse I want is verse 14. Because we've been over this, we've been in this for a couple of weeks now. And uh, so, but I'll give you this anyway, because this is where the parable is explained. Where it, it, it explained where, you know, and so you don't have to add a, add a whole lot to the Word of God. And sometimes just read it for face value and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Right? Or you ask yourself, what is God saying to, to me? Because sometimes we want to nudge, we want to nudge, we want to nudge our neighbor. Listen, you need the Holy Ghost to nudge you. Now, the Holy Ghost is never going to lie to you. When that word is coming forth, listen, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, listen, He knows what's going on in your life. He knows what needs to be corrected and what needs to be adjusted, what needs to be aligned or realigned in your life. So He has a tailor-made word just for you. Just for you. It's stuff, listen, that you are here, there ain't nobody in this room going to hear like you heard it. Because God is talking to you. That's revelation knowledge that's flowing into your spirit, man. And when God said, I'm demanding change in your life, where he is going to challenge us, he is going to confront us, and we can't be, cannot be in Christ and not be willing to change. He is the unmoved mover. He is the one that is the same yesterday, today, and he will be forevermore. Here's what he says in verse 11 of Luke chapter 8. He says, now the parable is this, the seed is what? The word of God. These by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes, what? And takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should, what? Believe and be saved. That means respond to the gospel. It is not enough just to hear it. Whether you're on the street, whether you're in Walmart, whether you're at the gas station, whether you're in your job, whether you're at a revival meeting, or you in this house, in this room this morning, or wherever you are, that you're sitting under God's word being preached, proclaimed, heralded, and broadcast you are responsible for that word that you heard all right here we go to believe it and to be saved to give your life over to God he says when the world on the rock are those who when they hear receive the word with joy emotional and these have no root say no root they have no root. That big oak tree had roots, but they only just spread out. You can't, listen, you can't just spread out in God. You got to go deep in God. And I say, hey, you know, uh, spreading out in the Lord, you be like that oak tree. 
When the winds come and the storm blow and beat upon that house, listen, listen, you got to understand that you got to be have your life founded upon the rock. You can't build on sand and things that have no value. You got to build on the things that are eternal. You got to build on the things that are everlasting. Because the things that we brought, listen, that we have in this world, we can't take them with us. I don't care how, how good you look. Listen, I don't care how fine you dress. I don't care how fine you is. <laughs> listen, this body is going to decay. Listen, but you can't keep none of this stuff with you. I don't care if you got a mansion up on the hill, on the beach side. It don't matter. Somebody be going to live in it. Come on here, somebody. You can't take it down with you. Listen, unless you got a whole lot of money about a whole lot of dirt. And that one little piece of dirt for you is expensive. So we brought nothing in the world and it's certain that we're going to take what? We're going to take nothing out of the world. So they receive the word of God with, with joy or, or, or emotional. And we have a whole lot of emotional people in Christendom and church and in God, but they don't have no root within themselves. I talked to a young man just the other day, went to a meeting, and uh, I said, well, what was the message? He didn't know what the message was. I said, what, what, what was the message? What was the word? What was taught, right? He got all the hors d'oeuvres. Uh, 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 I said, well, you just wanted to, you, you was excited about the hors d'oeuvres and all the different fillers, but you don't know what the main course was? If you ate some food, you ought to know what you ate. I ain't talking about two days ago. I ain't talking about three months ago. I'm talking about a few hours ago. So there's no way you're going to sit up in God's house, hear God's word, right, and give attention, give heed to the word of God, and it don't change you. Some people are just in stuff just for the emotion, just for the hype. And listen, and you can't altogether break, you know, blame, uh, you know, maybe celebrity preachers or well-known preachers or whatever it is. But listen, it's a way that we got to deliver the word of God. We don't need all those antics. Now, some things will distract people from hearing the word of God. If I walked up here with all kinds of jewelry on, and you know, and I'm looking like a little thug or somebody, and I'm saying, God, I want to bless and prosper, all you're going to be looking at is the, my gold chains and jewelry and all this stuff going on with me. You might give half your attention to the Word of God for looking at me. And I said, how is that? I said, oh, the Word was sown in you. You got real happy, but you ain't hear nothing. Let me get so happy, so excited. They get so happy, so excited. And a lot of this is cultural from a cultural perspective. I get that. But I believe the Holy Spirit is still moving. But you ain't get so happy the way you don't hear what God is saying. I hear people getting prophesied to. They speaking all in tongues. How you going to hear with all that going on? You need to close your mouth, hush up, and listen and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. In that moment. Because listen, the devil could be setting you up for a failing too. I'll be listening, boy. I'll be like, hmm, okay. Because <laughs> if you ain't accurate, I'm not going to be receiving stuff that ain't God ordained for me. You know how it's easy for people to get deceived, the spirit of deception, because they don't want the pure, unadulterated word of God. Now they want it all watered down. Make me feel good, preacher. Tell me what I want to hear, you know. That's, that's what they want now. Get me all excited. Get me all happy. But don't have no root within themselves. Now, if you got root within yourself, it's a whole nother issue. Yeah, you got root within yourself. Go ahead and shout about it. Go ahead and dance about it, right? Because now that word is bringing victory and liberation into your life. And you have a thorough understanding. And you understand your covenant rights, your covenant privileges, and your covenant responsibilities in the things of God. Get so excited and you ain't going out to live nothing. <laughs> so these are the ones on the rock places. But they have no root. Say they have no root. Yeah, tell somebody to get some roots. And we've been trying to teach you how to get some roots. Romans 12, 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed, what? By the renewal, the regenerate of your mind, right? Because if you don't, the culture is going to cause your mind and your spiritual walk with God to deteriorate. And I'm, te I'm, I'm, te I'm telling you right now, if you don't spend time with God in prayer, you don't spend time with God reading and studying His Word, you're going to digress away from the things of God. And you're going to think you're somewhere that you're not. Because once you get trod off a side, you're going to be just like that big old oak tree. Now, you, some people listen, they can stand for a certain amount of time, right? It's roots there, but the roots don't go deep. 
She'd be like, oh, they're doing all right. You think they're doing pretty good. Oh, yeah, but they had no real storm. They had no real storm. They done cried over a few things. You know, they done murmured. They done complained over a few things, you know, screaming and hollering over a few. But you ain't had no real storm in your life. Now, the moment that you have a real, real storm in your life, it's going to tell on you. It's going to tell on you. You've been in class learning what? You've been in school doing what? You've been in God's house doing what? It's going to tell on you when temptation comes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's going to tell on you. It may not be today, but tomorrow is a whole other day. You make up your mind that you're going to live for God, boy, the devil going to try you. People are going to try you. And it's going to tell on you. And somebody's going to have to pray over you, minister to you, and should be pointing you right back to renewing your mind with God's word and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because we're going to doubt your salvation. But you've got to re-strengthen yourself. You got to refocus yourself. You got you to stabilize yourself and your walk with God. Because now you enter into a real psychological warfare with the things of God. So if you sit here the word of God, listen, it's psychological warfare whether you like it or not. Because there's a constant battle that's going on because Satan understands that that word is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, the piercing the sunder of soul and spirit. Listen, and God knows the thoughts and the intention of your heart. It began to separate, listen, the spiritual thing from the natural stuff in your life. That's meat right there. That's the operation of God in your life. You say, well, I'm free. I got free. I'm, I'm free from this. It's because of that word that is so powerful, that word that is so potent, that word is, is like a, a, a surgeon's scaffold. It know how to cut, where to cut without killing you. God said, I'm going to do some divine surgery in your life. If you allow the word of God, if you allow the power, the potency of God work, listen, the word will work in your life, but you can't fight and resist it. So you got to have root within who? Root within yourself. But they believe for a while, letter part of verse 13, it says, and in time of what? Temptation, it says they fall away. And then in verse 14, we deal with the ones who fell among thorns or those who win. They have heard, go out and are choked with what cares. They're choked with riches, things and stuff, and the pleasures of life and bring what? No fruit to maturity. So it talks about no root and no fruit. Boy, that's a sad day. You got a tree you done planted and you hopeful. You got a tree that you done planted and you got great expectancy that you're going to reap the benefits from this tree, that you want some fruit, this tree to bear some fruit, that you can partake of the fruit of that tree. <laughs> it's bad to have no root because if you don't got no fruit, no root, you will not have any fruit. You got to have root before you get fruit. In other words, your life has to be, listen, it has to be rooted in God's word. Some people got it all backwards. Even like with gifting, you want gifting, you got no root in your life. You say, oh, I'm gifted. Oh, I'm anointed uh, by God. The gift and calling of God are without repentance. You say, hey, you know, God is opening doors for me. Oh, yeah, he opened doors for you, but if you don't have no root in yourself, Hmm? How are you going to give people what you don't have? Roots is simply a foundation of God's word in your life that begin to take you throughout the whole of your life. All you do is build upon it. And if you're giving, listen, if you're giving that tree, if you're giving your life what you need, listen, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. One plant, one want is God to give the increase. You know what I told you um, about the tree that we planted? And it was a big, uh, big uh, huge bucket. Red maple tree. 
And uh, it said to dig, you know, the hole, you know, twice the size of the bucket, as wide as the bucket. So I'm not there digging and digging and digging. I'm measuring everything out to make sure, you know, I get it right as close to right as I possibly can. Because I want this tree to live and bear fruit and give shade over my house that the sun is beating on. <laughs> so I plant it, fertilize it, put a whole lot of water in there, cover it up. And uh, day one, day two, day three, day 30, day 60, day 90, I think it might have been a year later. And all of a sudden I say, oh, it's getting a little bit higher. Because I was measuring it with another tree. I say, oh. I say, there's something going on down there. I'm like, I need to pull this tree up. See, that what happened to people. They pulled themselves up. In order to get real rooted in God, you have to stay in the place that God planted you. It's dangerous to keep up rooting the tree up, rooting the tree up, rooting the tree, right? Because every tree don't thrive in all kind of soil. I, you know, I just had to throw that one in. <laughs> they don't thrive and grow in every kind of soil, right? If some trees need a little bit more water than others do, you can act, you overwater some and they'll die. Oh, God, help me here. They don't make it. And so when we get rooted in God, things in our life begin to change. We're never the same. When we get rooted in God, we begin to see our life flourish. It's the stuff on the inside that matters. Right? We look at everybody to see us, see, see me. No, no, no. It's what's not seen that's the most important. You know, everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be heard. This is what I got. This is who I am. But do you really have what you say you have? Well, don't say amen. Say, oh, ouch. Because <laughs> the greatest room of improvement in every one of our life there is, uh, uh, is the room of improvement, right? The, the greatest room. That we can always improve and be better in the things of God, but it takes that discipline in our lives. So we have this one group that what they have no root, and then this one that they have no fruit. You say, listen, I'm rooted, but I'm not fruity. <laughs> I've been in God for a long time, but you don't have no real fruit in your life. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Well, I can show you a little bit about this fruitiness. Because a whole lot of folks said I'm saved and I know Jesus. But they're not really rooted and grounded in God. You can't be rooted and grounded in God and live your life to yourself. How you want it, when you want it, and on your terms. Because the word going to challenge you. Yeah, you know, God ain't going to make you. But you can go and do the chastening of the Lord. Because if you know to do the will of God and you don't do it, he said, I'm going to whip you with many stripes. It's the, listen, that, that's happening and going on in people's life. Listen, it ain't nobody's fault but your own. You can't rebel against God, rebel against the word of God, rebel against authority, and expect your life to be blessed and prosperous. And sometimes, listen, it, it's, it's the goodness and mercy and the grace of God for a whole lot of people. And you just deliberately disobey God and do what you want to do. That's too dangerous. You know, because the enemy can talk, knock you out and lay you to rest. Galatians chapter 5. Let's go. Somebody ought to get rooted in fruit. Say, hey, hey, you ain't got to worry about me. Hey, you ain't got to babysit me. Hey, I would decide to send some milk of the word. I've been eating me some meat. Uh, that's when folk get rooted in God. You ain't got to be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, where you been? Hey, they going to show up. They going to do what they supposed to do. They got a prayer life. They got a word life. Come on, somebody. They ain't going to be in everybody's prayer line. <laughs> be like, oh, what? What? That's the $100 line? Uh -uh, I don't need none of them lines. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is what that is in the world. And the gospel that I received is free. I 
I'm trying to help somebody. I ain't saying you don't need fivefold ministry. I'm not saying there ain't a time that you need to call, like James said, for the elders of the church, right? And let them pray over you and know you were all in the name of the Lord. But they doing that but still because somebody messed up and got out of alignment. Open themselves up. The devil sucker punch you. And it's something you know you can't recover yourself and get out of the mess and the mud on your own. Somebody got to come get you. God got to send out his rescue squad. Somebody got to call 911 and say, hey, I'm in the well of a mess. Somebody come get me. Somebody come rescue me. You ever had your life flash before you? That's how some people is happening to them right now. And they run back to the house of God. You know, and they only last for a short span of time because they don't have no root within themselves. So if you stick around long enough, get rooted and grounded in God. We planted a Japanese uh, plum tree in our backyard. And uh, that thing sat back there, I don't know, maybe two years at least, three maybe, I don't remember. Ain't seen no Japanese plums. I said, boy, <laughs> I, said, I said, man, well, I'm going to cut this tree down. And we went to Africa and they said, hey, no, you got to beat that tree. You got to put some stress and some pressure on that tree and it'll yield some fruit. You know, you know you got to fertilize, you know you got to dung it, you know. And uh, so I did all that. I said, well, one of these got to work. <laughs> so I'm going to beat it up and I'm going to fertilize it. I'm going to dung it. And it, but if it don't bear fruit, I'm going to cut it down. That next year, boy, the tree was so loaded. Huh? <laughs> when you got root in God, you can take more than you think you can take. You can stand longer than you think you can stand. You can endure longer than you think you can endure. You can endure harder than a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ because you have victory in your life because of what's on the inside of you. And folk running from tests. They running from storms. They running from hard times. It's going to cost you something to get rooted. It's going to cost you something to bear real Holy Ghost fruit in your life. It don't just happen. <laughs> it's happened because somebody yielded it happened because somebody surrendered it's happened because somebody knows they're coming to the rights privileges and responsibilities alright we're going to get to Galatians I promise you God sell crock pots over here you need one we got crock pots for you <laughs> so my assignment for uh, 2018 is really a good portion of where the body of Christ and the saints of God and the believers are concerned but we yet know that we do the work of the evangelist and we obey the great commission of God and Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. But there's a whole lot of people that don't have no root within themselves but yet proclaim it and confess it and profess it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they call it, you know, right, wrong, and wrong, right. And that's why the blind leading the blind and a whole lot of people is falling over into ditches and falling over into pits and they can't get themselves out. Because they don't have no root within themselves. You know, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. <laughs> Woo, sometimes you have to listen, remind yourself of the promises of the word of God. So you got to preach to your own self. You got to teach what you got to teach to your own self. You got to proclaim and hear the same word to yourself that you give to somebody else. Because man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. <laughs> Galatians chapter five. Let's go right down here to verse number twenty-two. A whole lot of folk, listen, when you're not rooted, you're going to walk, listen, in the works of the flesh. That sin nature, listen, it's not supposed to be having dominion, it's not supposed to be having rule, it's not supposed to be reigning in over your life. Right? And it's not supposed to do that. If we have yielded ourselves to God, we, we are in the world, we're not of the world. We've come out of that system, we come out of that way of thinking, right? And we seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, all these other things, to, boy, they shall be added up unto us. God's way of thinking, God's way of doing, of being right and having ourselves aligned with God. You know, people that talk you out of stuff, well, it don't take all of that. Oh, God didn't mean, no, God means just what his word said. And his word, listen, is the final authority. I don't care who preaching. I don't care who talking. I don't care what fivefold ministry gift. Listen, he is God over everybody. 
So if somebody teaching and talking and telling you something that's going contrary to the word that you're supposed to read and study those scriptures to see where those things that your rabbi, your preacher, your prophet, your apostle, your pastor, your teacher is teaching you, you will be deceived. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. <laughs> Lord, help me here today. What no, what no man mean? No man mean no man. That mean nobody. No human. It is to, it's to deceive you. Don't mean that we don't need them, that we got to hear them. It's God's way. But you still got to make sure that the word of God is the final authority. And if you don't know your covenant rights, you're going to get deceived. You don't know what the word of God says to you. You got problems coming. People will talk you out of God's covenant promises. <laughs> and you be, you be living beneath them, suffering and crying and caring on. Now, man, nobody don't love me. Nobody don't care. Well, hey, come on now. You got to submit yourself to something. Oh, God, help me here. Can I park here for a minute? <laughs> 120 seconds. <laughs> With submission to God's word, the authority of God's word, authority. It's so very important. You know, because it's not, listen, it's not something that's ugly, that's mean, that's nasty. It's like Shriver talks about children should obey their parents, submit to their parents, to that authority, that, what, that their lives can be blessed and they can have longevity of life. Imagine what happens when we submit ourselves to the authority of God's word, like Scripture says, to humble ourselves. I mean, God's not going to do it for you. That means you got to willingly obey, willingly submit, willingly humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You know what it does? It produces fruit. Humility is like a garment that you wear that begins to be such a great, awesome blessing in your life. Oh, I tell you something to change you forever and change the whole church and the mindset of the church and the perspective of the church as well as our society. And we should be submitted one to another. But if you have submitted yourself to the word of God, if my wife does not submit herself to the word of God, listen, I might be just running around on the wild goose take hoping and a praying that she's going to submit to me. Same thing with your kids. Because it's their choice and it's their decision to submit. Jesus submitted to the Father's will for his life. That's why he says, not my what? Not my will, but Lord, your will be done in my life. It don't even mean they got to have everything right together. It's just God's order and design of things. Oh, God, help me here. Let me. Oh, Jesus. Don't mean everything going to be right. Don't mean everything going to be kosher for you. Because you know sometimes you have a problem with God's word for yourself. Where you at, Lord? <laughs> I'm submitted, but where you at, Jesus? You know, I'm actually, you know I need you right now. Somebody say right now. Right, I need you right now. Need you right now, Lord. And you're going to get upset with God? You're going to break rank? <laughs> you're going to come out of your submissiveness to God, your humility with God, your waiting on the Lord? Because what? You mad? You upset? You, who, who you mad with? You can't hurry God. You just better wait on the Lord like David said and, and be of good courage and, what, and he shall strengthen your heart. I mean, it's going to work out in your favor. But when people get outside of the word of God and decide to make things happen on their own, I promise you they got trouble coming. Oh, somebody pulling on something today. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, help me here. <laughs> uh, but that was, that's what Peter talked about, right? You know, in submission, it's like wearing a garment that's beautiful. <laughs> it's not designed to be ugly or abusive. But to be beautifully worn and adorned. <laughs> Imagine if we clothe ourselves with humility in God's word. What our lives look like. What our homes look like. What our communities look like. What our neighborhoods look like. What our churches and our ministries look like. All right. Oh God, help me here. <laughs> Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verse number 22. It says, but the fruit of the spirit, what? Is love. When you get rooted in God's word, listen, your life will be filled with his love, with his joy, with his peace. And you begin to understand that some days you got to have long suffering. You got to walk and live in kindness, walk and live in goodness, walk and live with faithfulness, walk and live with gentleness and self-control. He says, against us there is no law. 
Ain't no legalism here. It's because, listen, we are now submitted to the law of the spirit of Christ. <laughs> I just read it, please. And the law of the spirit of Christ that made us free from what? The law of sin and death. That we can now walk in the newness of life because, listen, we have been rooted and grounded in the word of God, the power, the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us say we have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. That the word of God will do a work so thorough on the inside of us coupled with the Holy Ghost that it will blow a human mind, it will blow a natural mind because it's the operation of the Son of God that's being manifested on the inside of us. It's, not that it's going to be done that anybody going to see. But when you come out, boy, you come out the closet, you come out the desert, you come out your seat in the fast and then praying and filling yourself up with the word of God. Not only are you going to know, but other people are going to know that whom the Son has freed is free indeed. That yoke's going to be destroyed and burdens going to be lifted. Oh, captive daughter of Zion, free your own self from captivity and bondage by yielding and submitting to the word of God and the the Holy Spirit and spiritual discipline and bear some fruit in your life. <laughs> bear some fruit. Psalms 1 and 3. Come on, let's go. Psalms 1 and 3. That's why we're doing our New Testament Bible reading. Because I know I can't give you everything. I'm not trying to leave here prematurely as a preacher, you know, as a teacher of God's word, <laughs> you know, and no, 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 <laughs> no. I'm trying to live a long life that I'm satisfied and I'm shown the salvation of the Lord. All right, we're going to cut across the field on some of these. Psalms 1 and 3, we're going to go right there. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3, and then he shall be like what? A tree. That is planted. Say planted, 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 planted. You got to get planted in order for you to get roots. If you don't ever get planted, listen, you put limitations. Right? We got plants right here in this bucket. It's in a bucket. It's limited to its growth. As long as it's in a bucket, a bucket, and the bucket in a bucket, <laughs> it got very little room for growth. Tell somebody to release that thing, release that thing, release that thing, release that thing. And all we got to do is take it out the bucket that is in, put it in the bigger white bucket, and it's got space to grow. It got it got space to flourish. It got great potentiality. But we have limited this growth process by leaving it in this bucket. Sometimes people put restrictions on their own self that God never did. You got to test the limits. You say, hey, man, I got a glass ceiling up here. Well, let's break the glass ceiling and soar to the heights that God have will and purpose and destined for us to soar to. Listen, you don't got to ask for nobody permission to break that glass ceiling. Because there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And the power and the glory of God in your life is greater than any power. Some stuff you don't need nobody permission. You say, listen, I've been in this box for way too long. I've been trapped in here for way too long. Listen, I've been hindered for way too long. I've been crippled for way too long. You running around here anorexic in your spirit, man, you got to renew your mind with the word of God. You running around here, everything calling you to fall apart and about to lose your mind and the devil trying to put you on medication. You need to tell the devil you are a liar. I am a son of God, a daughter of God, and I refuse to bow down to your foolishness. <laughs> he says like a tree that's planted by the what? By the rivers of water. He said you're going to bring forth your fruit what? In its season. He said whose leaf uh, shall not wither and whatever they do shall prosper. That's why David said I once was young but now I'm old but I have never seen the righteous forsaken know his seed. Begging bread. When I planted myself, got, uh, uh, gave my life over to God, planted in the Lord, renewing my mind, get some roots in my life. Everything changes. I'm trying to tell you, everything changes. 
that you begin to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You just add a sincere mix of the word that you, that you may grow thereby. You know, but you can't stay on baby food all your life. It's something wrong if you, you know, you adult now and you still eating baby food as a steady diet. And you ain't graduated to eat meat. Just naturally speaking, babies say, mm -mm, I don't want this pacified no more. I don't want this breast milk no more. Because <laughs> my little life done been established and I smell something better than mm -mm, good. You're keeping away from it the good stuff. <laughs> this stuff was only designed to bring me to a certain point. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> right? Some people life, some people ministries, listen, I'm telling you, they're gifting, they're anointed, only, listen, they're to bring you to a certain point. That's why we need the totality of the body of Christ nowadays. Because don't know one person have it all. They'll bring you to a certain point. You know, here a little, there a little. You know, then God will transition you, God will divide and hook you up, connect you up, you know, with so many different avenues, right? Then somebody speak over your life. Listen, in the presence of a person that God have a day, it, it don't take all day, it don't take all night for an impartation to happen in your life. You say, hey, if Jesus was here, can you imagine sitting at the feet of Jesus and not be changed? Can you imagine sitting at the feet of Jesus and you a devil? And you a thief and you a robber? And you got the money bag? And you don't have no fear of God, though. Eleven benefited. One decided, hey, oh, I'm going to do my own thing. Called him the son of perdition. We got a whole lot of them walking around today. <laughs> well, one said, hey, uh -uh, I'm denying the Lord. I don't know. Another said, oh, there he is. And he betrayed the Lord. And people don't have no root within themselves. Peter thought he had something that he didn't have. Oh, no, Lord, I'm going to go die with you. You say, oh, yeah? We're going to see. Because for that rooster crow, boy, you got problems coming. And so you have a whole lot of people like that. That's why you got to know that you 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 got some roots in God for real. So if you like a tree planted by the rivers of water, you're going to bring forth your fruit in what? In this season. And whatever you do in what? It shall prosper. That means you got the foundation of God's word in your life. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Come on, somebody. You know, there's one initial baptism, but there's many feelings in God. Right? And if you continue to renew your mind with that word, you're getting stronger from within. That's where real strength comes from. Right, because the Holy Spirit is sent to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, right, to show us things to come, to bring back to our members all things that have been spoken unto us. Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in the heavens. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto what? Our pathway. God's word is. If we get really rooted and grounded in the Lord, our life is never the same. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 and look at verse number 7. We got future generations that have to change the way that they are thinking. And we have to train them, we have to equip them, we have to develop them, we have to point them in the right direction. Yeah, listen, you, you're not going to have a victorious life outside of having a real relationship and walk with Jesus. You know, it's what we're reading all different kinds of books more than they read their Bible. No, I ain't saying we don't need self-help this and encouragement that and, you know, your best this and God victory here and, you know, you got man problem, you got woman problem, you got relationship problem, something, but you got a book for everything now. And I'm looking at him saying, how often do you read your word? Carry my word like a lunchbox. I'll be on break in a corner. Be like, oh, this is the do not disturb sign. Huh? You be to stick that finger up, but that finger don't mean just, hey, I need to go. That finger mean not right now. That finger mean that the sword that's sowing that word got to eat and live by the same word. So I can't, I can't feed you and not feed me. That's a recipe for disaster. You be like, what happened to the preacher? Huh? And it's happening to a lot of people. You know, I came and preached to you, and then all of a sudden, I'll, I'm a castaway. 
Preach to you and I don't make it in. Because I'm running around here talking about don't do as I do, do as I say do. And we got problems coming. Because people going to do more what they what? See? They're going to do more what they see than what they hear. So you can say it and say it. And we need to say it. But then you also got to do it and do it and keep on doing it. And live out a life before the people that we lead and the people that need to come to Christ or the people that could be weak in the faith. You know, uh, uh, they say, hey, you know, I heard the word, you know, I don't have no root. I heard the word, but I don't have no fruit. We need to pattern for them how to be fruity. Right? Somebody need to get with somebody and say, hey, man, we need to get you rooted. But they got to want to. They got to show up. I know we compel them to come in by way of evangelism, but you got to want to stay in once you get in. It's a process. Some of you don't want to go through the process. It's a pr man, I'm telling you, it's a process. It ain't about osmosis. It ain't like overnight. It's a process. You know, but hey, you know, we're going to put these beans in the crock pot. Well, you can't go back 10 minutes later opening the pot. Tell me, is y'all ready? <laughs> oh, they ready. You pull them out and all of a sudden you be chewing. You be like, mm, they ain't, they're kind of hard. We got, we got some crushy black-eyed peas around here. That old yellow rice. It ain't thorough enough. You know, every time I got some meat, listen, you got to marinate, let it marinate overnight. Somebody got, they got 10-minute marinade. Okay. Still let the 10 minutes run its course. You got to let that word do what it does. If you meditate on it, day and night. That's what the Lord said to Joshua. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Boy, you got an assignment. It ain't going to be easy for you. Listen, you're going to have to go over there and fight to get in that promised land. And if you don't got no word in you, you ain't got no fight in you, I promise you. In order for you to have real fight in you, you got to have real word on the inside of you. You want to endure? You want to stand? All right, we're going to find out. Get sick. Get in some adversity. And you start to faint. We know your strength is small. We going to know. It don't mean that we ain't going to come get you. We'll send the tow truck. We'll send the record. We'll send the commercial, one matter of fact, to make sure you get out. Pull you out the mud. But when you get out, you got to want to stay out. You should be going back to the same old excessive riot. You know, people talk about you, you you one of those holy people. I sure am. You one of them Christians, I sure am. You one of them believers, I sure am a believer. Yeah, Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. And I have communion with him. I drink his blood and I eat his flesh. <laughs> you know, many walked away from Jesus because, you know, of that. They say, oh, no, we can't hear this. This boy done lost his mind. Ain't this Joseph's son, Mary's son? Don't we know his family? What is he talking about? Eating his flesh and drinking his blood. We got a cult going on around here? <laughs> and that's where people live. They don't have no intimacy with God. No intimacy with God. Colossians chapter 2. Mm-hmm. We'll continue next week. It's all right. Somebody trying to help me preach my message around here. Where are we going? Colossians what? Two and what? Oh, I got a lot of ground to cover. You know, back in the day we grew up, you know, we watched Batman. And, you know, at a certain time the episode went off. And they said, we're going to be back here tomorrow. Same bat station, same bat channel. Right? And we was right there waiting on it. Uh, we want to know what happened to Batman and Robin. Did the Joker kill him? Did the Riddler get him? Well, what happened? <laughs> huh? And every time they break free, break through, and win. In Colossians chapter number 2, 
Let's look at verse 1. We'll go down to verse 1 to verse 6. Verse 7. I'm sorry, you're right. Verse 7. Are, are you with me? Colossians 2, verse 1. It says, For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Y'all see that? He ran around saying, I'm like, you're so smart. You're like, you're so smart. You, you, you might be educated. You may have some schools of high learning. But where's your mind where God is concerned? Where's your mind where truth is concerned? That's where real freedom is. That's what Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32 to the Jews that believed on him. He says, listen, if you continue in my word, you continue in truth, right? And the truth that you know is going to make you free. But if you don't abide it, if you don't continue it, I promise you, you're going to have some bondages and some chains in your life and some shackles in your life, some stuff that's going to be holding you out of that chain and ball on your foot. And it's going to be limiting you to your potential. It's going to be limiting you to your destiny. You're going to be talking about, be, be talking about come on. You're going to be talking about, come on here, baby. You know, there's some stuff invisible, you don't even see it. But they drag it around, ball, their feet chained down with all kind of foolery. And he's running around, he's like, but come on, God, let's run. Come on, let's go ahead and run. You know, we footmen, let's run with these horsemen. And you can't run nowhere. Because those things are hampering and hindering your life to have real success in God. Success even in your own life. Because God's word will begin to work in every area of our life. Spirit, soul, and body. So we got to speak that word. When our body's sick, you better open up your mouth and say, by his stripes I'm healed. You run around talking about I'm going to die if you want to. Uh oh, I shall not die but live and declare what the glory of God. It ain't my time to die, devil. And if it is, I'm going to fight to the end. I'm going to fight to the end. I'm going to fight to the end. Until there ain't no breath in my body, they're going to say, yep, he gone. He ain't here no more. Well, all you got to do is mention Jesus. You see what happened? Jesus. If I don't start calling on the name of the Lord with you, you're going to say, yep, Pastor Go. Pastor Go. Uh, somebody shouting the victory, shouting glory, shouting holy, shouting hallelujah, and there ain't no response. You know, real praise party, real worship experience. They say, yep, Pastor Go. <laughs> He's transitioned. So it says in verse 4, Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. It says, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, look what he said. He says, Walk in him. And he says, What rooted and built up in him and what and established in the faith. Now faith comes by what? Hearing and what? And hearing by what? The word of God. He says, as you have been taught, somebody got to teach you, and you know, and you got to hear the word of God. How can they preach this to be set? How can they hear without a preacher? How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel and bring what? Glad tidings of good things. So we got to be students of the word of God. We got to sit at the feet of Jesus. We have to humble ourselves and say, speak, Lord. That's why you need a good amen. Oh, that means you're in agreement. People don't say amen. I'd be scared. I'd be wondering, like, okay, you went in with that, heard the word. It's sown in the heart place, the callous place in your life. Oh, you heard the word, but you don't have no root in yourself. Oh, you heard the word, but you, you ain't bringing forth no fruit. All right, let's close. Say rooted. And built up in him. And then what he says, established. I mean, you got, you got a foundation now. You're not shaky. You're not double-minded. You are established what in the faith. That means you ain't going nowhere. Let the storms come. The winds blow. You know, let the raging of your life. Because you're trusted in the Lord. That's where your hope is. It's not within yourself. But it's because of him. So establish in the faith, and it says, if you have been what taught? It says, abounding what? Abounding in it. 
And it says with thanksgiving. So these, because they have no root, they, and they have no root, you can't have no fruit. And there's a great falling away that's taking place right now. Because people are not rooted and grounded in God and don't have a mind to bear fruit where the things of God are concerned. Tell us about it. Don't fall away now. Tell them don't faint now. Mm-hmm. He says in the latter days, many shall fall away. And they're going to be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And you got people with all this damning the doctrine and teaching that's going on that dooming and damning people's soul because they don't have no root within themselves. They hear any and follow any old thing. Chase any old thing. First thing, smoking hot, looking good, smelling good. They will jump on board. How many know Satan transformed himself as an angel of light? It'll look just like what you're looking for. Smell like just what you're looking for. Here's a setup. It's the bait of Satan. So the only way we don't get deceived, as James says, every man is drawn with his own lusts, enticed, seduced by the bait of Satan. I'm saying after they've heard it, after they know the word of God, that's dangerous, man. I don't know. I've been saying that for the last three, four Sundays. All I'm saying is it is dangerous to be living your life on the edge like that. It's dangerous. There's too much happening. There's too much going on. And, you know, especially if somebody is the real true servant of Satan and child of the devil. Oh, Lord, help me here today. In other words, their lives are not ruled or governed by the word of God. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care who they abuse. They don't care who they kill or destroy. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life. And that you might have life what? Right? If you're in something, connected with something that ain't producing life in you, you better do something quick, fast, and in a hurry, without hesitation, reservation, or excuse. Because you won't stand before God and say, Lord, I didn't know. I keep telling folks, listen, don't come over here if you want to. Because once you hear truth, now you're responsible for it. This folk go on places, listen, they, they ain't worried about it. Because they're going to walk out and live like they want to live anyway. But when you get under the unadulterated truth of the word of God. And you go out and do like you want to do. All that's on you. Just like we marry them, we'll bury them. Amen, somebody. Because there's certain stuff, listen. You can sin a sin that's not unto death. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You can sin a sin that's not unto death. Somebody pray for you. You can recover yourself. But there is. Scripture says there is, there is a sin unto death. We don't say that you pray for that now. <laughs> we ain't trying to kill nobody. But a lot of it is by way of people's choices and their decisions. Because God wants us to live a long, light shining, victorious life in him. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Thank you for coming out being a part of the service today. Uh, amen. I am committed. I am focused on giving you what God's given me. Uh, I'm on a mandate. I'm on a specific assignment. And God says, hold not back, but speak. And if the Lord has spoken, how can the prophet be quiet? Amen. You might say, I'm shifting. No, I already shifted. I already shifted. And I ain't driving no Pinto. <laughs> it's a freight train. He says, I mean, all aboard. Got your ticket. Because when it gets to moving, New York trains, they don't play. You either own it, waiting for it. Please don't get in front of it. Fall down in there, you might not get out. <laughs> it ain't no rope. Somebody got to rescue you. Or you'll be a tale that was told.